Hello and welcome back to the channel. It is Mark from PowerSonic and Apprentice One to One. You'll have noticed, for those of you who are regular viewers, that I have changed the position of the camera for this video. I've moved in close to the test board, had a bit of a rejig, and I just thought I'd see how this comes out. The purpose of today's video is to look at a couple of contact voltage indicators. Now these are from Martindale and QTech. We're going to get in and have a close-up look at how they work and what they do in just a second. But for those of you who followed along over the last few months, you will have heard me speaking about diverted neutral cur currents on my channel quite a bit. And you know, essentially that is when you can have current that should be circulating in the um, line to neutral path, but for some reason or other, it's making its way into earthy components of an electrical installation. And the reason you would use a contact voltage indicator is to put that against any earth metallic parts, it could be the externals of a distribution board or perhaps uh, water or earth bonding pipe, some steel structure, just before you put yourself in any contact with it and start carrying out safe isolations and other safe systems of work, it's a good early way of seeing if there is anything there that could potentially cause you an issue. Uh, and equally you can also use them for monitoring purposes through the course of some installation work and I'll speak about how you can do that in a little second as well but first up let's have a look at them so the two together you can see here we've got the QTEC and the Martindale there are a couple of differences and we'll go through them one at a time so first up with the QTEC and this is the KT1700 and it works at a range of 50 volts to 600 volts AC so down to 50 volts, if you put this onto any sort of metallic component, it should start to beep. Now this one has batteries in it, they both have batteries in. Um, to get them to work, they operate in different ways. So with the QTEC, you press the power button and it will turn it on and it will give you that beep turn. Um, you can hear it go in there every second or so and that's to let you know that it's ready. Now I've got my little adapter here positioned when I insert it into the to the line terminal you'll see it emits a rather nice turn I like that noise uh, it's a little bit different to the usual beeping and that's letting you know that there is a voltage there that could cause you a problem now if I pop it into the earth terminal on this same outlet so we're in there now you'll know it's just beeping so there's under 50 volts on the earth on that outlet so that's the key purpose that you would use this for. Say you were approaching a main switch inside um, a typical domestic meter cabinet and you want to make an isolation to carry out some work. But to the side of it, there's a gas pipe perhaps or something else in the local area to that. You know, you can use a clamp meter and see if there's any current flowing, but as a first quick, easy check, just sticking this onto the pipe work is an easy win. Um, to make sure you've got no voltage there before you get in and around those parts. Now the other beauty of these, and it, it, the key difference with the non-contact voltage indicators is these will work while you're wearing PPE. So a lot of the DNO guys and girls will have these in their kits because they have to wear their gloves, their leather outers, their face shields, um, and the safety boots at all times. So if they're carrying out any kind of isolation and if they were to use a non-contact voltage indicator because they need some sort of reference through our bodies um, to get them to operate correctly these don't these all work with PPE on your person so another key point of note with those ones the Martindale one so it's slightly bigger you'll see if I hold them side by side uh, if I get that balanced up on camera right but you can see it is a little bit bigger and it's the VT7 so these have been out quite a while and you need to prove it on a known live source first before you operate it that's clearly on the device and it basically will detect voltage above 50 volts so you'll see here if I hold the test button down that's just a quick check to say that the battery is okay you saw it illuminate and that it beats um, this will work at 50 to 60 volts, it's cat 3 to 600 volts and cat 4 to 300 volts and it's VSEN 61010-1 uh, feels nice and solid, they both feel good actually, they're good in your hand, they give you um, a bit of distance from any of the bitey parts that could be causing you an issue but same principle, we'll pop this into the line side 
and that's more of a traditional beep, a nice big bright red light, and that's telling you that there's something there you don't want to be touching. Again, if I pop that into the CPC side of this, you'll see nothing at all. It's quite happy. Um, same principle, you could use it on any kind of earthy bits and pieces around where you might be working or making an isolation to then carry out some work. Just a really good way of checking that there's nothing above 50 volts there that could cause you a problem. Um, say for example you were swapping a consumer unit and you could have an issue in a neighbouring property to do with um, broken neutral in a pen for example and all of that diverted neutral current is working its way into the property you're working on through the through the air thing um, system there so it's coming through the gas and water bonds into your installation and it's looking for a path back through the neutral on your install that's perhaps not broken or equally through the main earth that may be a better path for that current in that particular scenario. Now say you come to change the consumer unit and that fault's not yet in place so this is a really rare example but it could happen. Um, you can disconnect your main earth, have all of the cables and wires off the wall and at some stage essentially you would have a voltage on the bonding conductors and not on the main earth internal so you get a potential difference and you could put yourself between those two parts. Now a simple thing you can do is leave your contact voltage indicator connected up with those bonding conductors just in a, a terminal strip or however you want to do it and then if that was ever to become the case you get an audible turn and a light. Um, it's a little bit of a more robust way of being alerted to that potential danger than having a clamp meter on it for example that might just sit there spewing numbers out that you're maybe not going to always be looking at. So um, we'll cover that out on site. I'll show you how you can get it set up. We've been sort of trying to trying to do that ourselves. And it is a bit Heath Robinson um, in the way you link these into the bonding conductors. But I'm sure there's better ways of doing it with some banana clips or whatever. We can have a better try at that and try and demo it on the channel where you can have this as a little audible and visual indicator if you do end up having some voltages become present on any earthy bits whilst you're doing some work, for example. But I hope you found that useful. Um, the Q-Tech takes a couple of AA batteries, just as a final note, and they come with it when you buy it. And the Martindale is a nine volt battery. And again, it comes with it, which is all brilliant. They're both about 25, 30 quid, depending on where you go. So they're not mega expensive. Something nice to put in your toolbox and just give a quick check to make sure you're gonna be able to work safely is the key message from all of that, I think. You know, as we're seeing all of the growth in EV networks and um, prosumering and issues around extra load on DNO networks with air source heat pumps and such, there is speculation that we are going to see more issues with pen faults. And at the minute, I think it's around four to 500 a year, which is just over one per day. And the accidents registered against those incidents are a very, very small number. But even so, taking a few small precautions can ensure that you're not one of those people in that small percentage. So yeah, well worth considering. I'll drop links in the description of this video of where you can go off and find out more information about both the QTEC and the Martindale. Other manufacturers also make these as well. Um, these two were just ones we'd had in our kit, so I thought we'd have a quick run through of them. If you've got any questions or comments, as ever, drop them in below and I will happily do my best to try and answer. Otherwise, I will see you all on the next video. If you haven't already, please click on subscribe. It makes a massive difference to the channel and I will see you all on the next one.